Today with Josh from Soil Exploration Services, and we're we're doing stuff in the parking lot. What what's going on and what? We are installing a series of monitoring wells to monitor uh, groundwater conditions and for delineation purposes for a gasoline spill. Okay, so this is to make sure anything that was ever spilled in the environment up there where all the gas stations and everything are is, is not going not this way. coming this way. So they're putting in two wells right next to each other yep. and they'll compare between the two and they say, okay, it was here and then it was here or it was here but it never made it this far and stuff like that. Well, what we're doing is, the reason why we're putting two wells so close to one another is we're doing it for vertical delineation purposes. Okay. So we've got one set down, the, the bottom of the screen is 20 feet deep. And so the, the screen in, in the deep one, in the deep well spans from 15 feet to 20 feet. And then the shallow one, the one that we're gonna do now, the screen spans four foot to nine foot below grade. Oh, that's it? Yep. Oh, that's really shallow. Yeah. Okay, cool. And the big thing today is we get to explore this giant machine that you guys have brought out sure. and, and learn about how this process works and all that jazz. Sure. So before, while they're getting set up, why is it important that your company does what it does? How, how do you help people? How do you make the world a better place? Most gasoline stations have underground storage tanks. Okay. And that's where they store their gas before it's pumped out. It's pretty common for those tanks to leak. And once that gasoline passes into the groundwater and it starts to travel with or migrate with the groundwater, the potential for if someone has a residential well that's in that area and that's impacted, well, now that person is drinking gasoline, which has a lot of chemicals in it that are carcinogenic, give you cancer. The primary function of your job is to test and sample and say, this is what we found, not just in this space, but at this depth. Yep. And today we're gonna go through the process of actually drilling the well and putting setting the, the screen. Putting the well. Okay, so it isn't just a hole. There's a lot, there's, there's, there's quite a bit that goes down. Yeah, there's there's a lot involved in there. Sure. We cut through the asphalt and and that's what the big giant that, hole saw that's is That's what the, the hole saw is for. So once we get rolling, you'll see that um, they'll put a auger flight on, which is just a steel tube that's hollow in the middle, and it's got a set of spiral cutting teeth on it, and we'll start to drill down. And once on, on this particular well or this particular hole since we're not going as deep as we did on the first one, we've already taken all the, the soil samples that we need. Um, and typically that's someone's, what is called a split spoon. And we'll drive that in front of the auger, down through the middle of the auger, so the split spoon comes out the bottom and we'll pick up essentially the, the two feet that's beyond the auger, okay. the end of the auger. We'll pull that back up over the split spoon and you will see your, uh, your, your geology or your stratigraphy. So it'll, as it digs down, it actually maintains the integrity of yes. all the layers. It doesn't chew it all up. It's like there's this, and then there's this, and then there's this. As long as as long as you're sampling in front of the auger, out of the end of the auger. Say okay. if, say if you say if the bottom of your auger is 10 foot, as long as you run your split spoon from 10 foot to 12 foot, it maintains. Oh yeah. Okay. It maintains really what's cool. there. Okay. So. So it's like a core sample. Sure. Okay. So right now he's leveling the machine. Yep. And this is all just big hydraulic rams on pads. Yep. And it just he can move it any matter of any one. And it's kind of cool that he can get it level here with it sitting like it's out on the apron. Like half the machine's hanging off the end. As long yeah. As long as that power is straight. Yeah, the rest of them stay straight. Pretty much have a straight hole all the way down. So what are they doing right now? Right now they're just setting up to run the first the first bit of auger. Okay, and that'll so, be the, the big screw there. Yep, and at the bottom there's a, there's a drill head on the bottom with four cutting teeth on it. That's the four big buttons? Yep. Okay, and those are just big tungsten carbide nubs? Just teeth. Yep. Okay. Carbide teeth. And um, you'll see as they go down, 
the auger flights will spin cuttings up. Okay. It'll bring them up out of the ground and they'll just shovel them up, dump them up. Works like a big drill bit. Yep. Dump them into a, to a drum. Right now you can just see it sticking out the end of the auger. There's a little white plug right there. Yeah, down in the bottom. Typically they don't put the plug in there if you're sampling. Okay. But that little white plug, it's just to keep stuff from coming up inside the auger that you don't want. Okay. So when we get to depth, they'll actually they'll pull the auger up a little bit and they'll just they'll bump that plug out. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> there it is. Well, that's uh that's, probably that's a bit of a thing there. <laughs> indicative on how this hole is gonna go. The, the brick on the bottom is a good indicator of just yeah. So up on top, I see there's a big square vertical shaft. That's the drive shaft, because I see it coming off. There's a gearbox down here, yep. and then you can see the brake inside. Kelly bar. Kelly bar, that's what the square drive is? Okay, so that's the Kelly bar. That's driving this gearbox on the slide rails up and down. So the, the Kelly bar is what rotates everything. And then it goes into this gearbox, and then the gearbox here drives this shaft. So the maximum they can go down in one shot is the length of the Kelly bar. Right? Is that like that about no, it's, eight it's, foot section? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really the, the length of that, the length of the. Uh, so they can go down that far, then they got to come up and put another piece on. They, yeah, they would okay. have to, they would have to break loose. Okay, and then you know, move out of the way and put another. Piece, so put it's about plate. six or eight feet per shot. Okay. How much downward force can this generate, this particular well, machine? This, this, this particular machine is called a CME 45 or Central Mining Equipment 45 drill rig. Okay. Um, it's run by a 197 cubic inch diesel motor. Okay. Uh, 57 horsepower. But the way it's geared, it will produce uh, 4,800 foot pounds of torque. 4,800 foot pounds of torque. Yep. Right? That's a lot. It will produce 19,000 pounds of downforce. Okay. So that, that'll actually push down 19,000 pounds. Okay. And the retract is 13,000 pounds. It can pull as yes. well? Oh, wow. Yeah. It'll pull up as well. So it has to because of the weight of the auger and a couple or, hundred feet of pipe. Or if you split spoon stuck, they'll kind of hook onto it and, okay. and pull up on it. And, and pull it up out of the ground. Okay. Or at least get unstuck. And right now he's adding water to the inside of the auger because when he knocks that plug out, he doesn't want if it's wet sand that's down there, which I know it is. He wants to push it all out of the he way. He wants to keep the weight on it to keep it from blowing up the inside okay. of the auger. If it does have if it does blow up the inside of the auger, then we'll have to bail it out. Okay. It's, it's kind of a time consuming process. Screen. It is made out of PVC, schedule, you know, schedule 40 PVC. It's, it's a piece of pipe with lots of little yep. tiny... See, I, when you said well screen, I was thinking like a metal screen. No, and, metal and this is what's called a 10 little slot. So there's 10 little, there's 10 little slots per one inch. Okay, and then there's this hard plastic and there's point. there's just a, a point on and the they bottom. Just, they just set this in there. Set down the and, and the screen goes all the way up to here, but the next piece will just be solid. It'll be a, what's called a riser pipe. And, and it screws together solid. and there's an O-ring yep. seal. Solid piece of pipe. Okay. Well, I will give this to back to the gentleman. And this goes down to all? Yes, sir. Can I do it? Sure. Still an air mail. Grab it by the end and then extend it. You can drop it now. You can drop it now? Drop it now. Oh, it just sits right there. Yep. Okay. Cool. So the pipe has an inside diameter of four and a quarter. Yep. So you drill this down, now you've got an eight inch hole. Yep. What do you put in the hole to keep it, how do you keep it from collapsing as you pull the thing out? As you 
you build your well, so you'll put your PVC pipe down through the middle of it, which you're going to see. Okay. And then we will start putting sand, we'll start dumping sand down the inside of the auger. Okay. So as the sand reaches a certain height, they'll pull the auger up a little bit and that sand will spill out. This is a specific size sand. It's really, it's, 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 it's weird looking. Yep. And it's, call it sand, but it's coarse. Okay. So, so it's a really fine gravel. Yep. And really clean. Yep. Now, is, do they... I'm guessing this is well gravel, and they use this for you know drinking water wells. So this has probably been they make sure there isn't certain things in here, like anything harmful. Yes. Okay. So what he'll do is he'll he'll keep putting sand down there, and, and he'll measure it, which is what he's doing with the tape right now. He'll kind of bounce the tape and, and take a measurement. And so you want what he's put what he's building now is a sand pack for around the the screen itself. So where your PVC pipe is, with it, between the PVC pipe and the outside of the borehole, it's going to be sand at the very bottom and then gravel all the way up. Well, it's it's called that's called the annular space. Okay. So there will be seven feet of sand pad because the screen is five foot tall or five okay. foot long, and you want it to come two feet above the screen. Okay. So you have seven feet of sand pad, and then he'll put the bentonite chips on top of that all the way up to the top. And what's the purpose of the bentonite chip? Just to seal it, seal off anything above the ground surface okay. and the sand pad. Okay. So it keeps stuff from going back down the hole into the sand pad. So it, what it, really what it does is it keeps like surface runoff from running right back down the hole into the it sand pad. It just acts like a shield. Yep. So it's a hook. Yeah. We've had a huge amount of fun today getting to play in the mud and bentonite and they let me drive a tiny tank and I sincerely want to thank the really cool guys at Stearns Drilling. This is Bert, this is Tom, and this is Josh who's been like the ringleader of the whole circus and you're with Soil Exploration Services. Cool, so thank you sir. Sure. And thank you gentlemen, you guys are awesome. Tom especially let me answer the age old question of how cold is a well driller's butt? It turns out it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It, the weather is nice and now we know. But you guys have been a blast and we've had a lot of fun. And this is gonna go out to a lot of kids and we're just gonna hope the audio works. So thank you guys for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.